is overtime here again at Old Favorite Friday, and I'm talking with Bill McPhee. We are talking about St. Bernard's App 12. to the quadruple. Bill, I, sometimes I get worried. I worry that we're going to run out of beers to do, because we do an Old Favorite Friday video every single week, and there's only so many beers in the shelves. And then I realize, by going through my notes, we've never done this beer. And that is shocking to me. It is that shocking. That we have never done this beer. That's just wrong. It's wrong. Now, we have done St. Bernardus Christmas Sale. We have done uh, Prior 8. Right. So we've done two of their beers. There's We have done the Triple. We haven't done Prior 6. Is it Prior 6 or is it... Uh, Potter 6. Pot, Potter, Potter 6. 6. Potter, Potter 6. Sorry. That's why, that's why I bring you in, Bill, because you know all <laughs> this stuff. You are an encyclopedia of Belgian beer knowledge. But no, listen, I, I saw this. I was like, we have to do St. Bernardus App 12. And... Bill was hanging around, so he's going to do this with me. We're going to talk about this quadruple. Uh, is there anything that like jumps out at you about this beer, about this brewery? Uh, you've been to Belgium many times. You know these things inside and out, as I said. Well, this is a very famous brewery for several reasons. Number one, it was the original source of West Leitrim, which was for many years considered the best beer made in the world. Right. It's, uh, and so they made the beer for West Leitrim, and then... West Vlatron moved it back into their monastery, and uh, St. Bernardus had to rebrand the beer, and so uh, that's kind of the history behind it. So it's very comparable, uses the same yeast strain, mm, probably okay. a very similar recipe, although they had to change it to distinguish the brands, but that's the historical significance of it. The other significance of it is, as Belgian quads go, it's Probably the best selling one and the best known one in is this it? country. I think. I think. I don't, I don't know. I mean, it, you I, tell me, but uh, I, I would. So. I would have thought Chimay Blue. Well, maybe. Would you maybe. Be right. Yeah, water. you're probably right. Just, just probably, as, probably a number of sales. Yeah, maybe, not, not, not quality wise, right? But no, just, just no. by by volume, where it's available. I right. just, I, I, you know, Chimay was the first, uh, you know, Trappist Dale that I was exposed to. Right. So I always think see that as being kind of the most prevalent, the right. one that's almost on draft. But Saint Bernard's is right up there, and I, yeah. I would agree with you 100 percent on this. Uh, this is their quadruple. You know, we make a quadruple called Quadraphonic. Yes. I know that these beers were so much. I mean, we don't. We're not a Belgian brewery by accident, right? We are a Belgian <laughs> brewery because you love these beers. True. Um, but you know, were, were you thinking about these kind of beers when, with this beer in particular, when you were developing our quad? Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I was tasting all of the big Belgian quads and then trying to decide all right, what aspects of this one do I like, what aspects of this one do I like, how close can we get with yeast strain to this one or that one, because as you well know, with Belgian beer, it's all about the fermentation, it's all about the yeast. Right. So uh, the recipe is the recipe to some degree. But, uh, but anyway, yeah, big influence on Quadraphonic. Yeah, I, I would be remiss every single time we talk about a classic Belgian beer, I always make sure I mention this. I thought sound like a broken record, but it's so important. This is a the old world, the traditional Belgian quads. They're not as sweet as a lot of the American Correct. interpretations of the style. That's something that we've also tried to take into account. Uh, but that's one of the things you'll notice is if you are a, a fan of, uh, you know, an American brewery that does this, and there's some exceptions, you're going to tend to be a little more sugar content, a little sweeter, and honestly, a little bit more one-dimensional. I, I, right. I feel like some of the, like the fruit profiles kind of in the same lane, whereas this is super nuanced, it's dry, it's drinkable. I mean, for the ABV being, you know, 10%, this know. thing is really, really drinkable, yeah, right? it really is. It goes down real smooth. It really does. Um, I wanted to ask you, you did you before we got on the on the video, you mentioned that you did a blind tasting recently, or sometime in the in the not too distant past, mm -hmm. where you tried a bunch of these quads, the the Trappist quads, and you were able to pick out. I know you're not tuning your own horn here. You were able to pick out pick out which one is which. What about this beer stands out to you on uh, other quads, or and just what are the flavor profile? What uh, are you, what are you I, so what I get out of it is just a hint of that spiciness which I really like. First of all, as you pointed out, it's very dry. It's got mm, just a smidgen of roastiness in the background of it, but not, not bitter at all. It's not overly sweet, very dry, and it's just got that beautiful, honestly, a lot of it is Belgian candy sugar. You get that, 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 that nice candy-ish flavor without being sweet. It's very hard to describe, but uh, you get a lot of that. <laughs> Sorry about that. You get a lot of that, <laughs> a lot of that uh, flavor out of it. So yeah. um, I don't know. It's very hard for me to describe, but that's what I get out of it. It's, uh, there's a hint of spiciness to it that I think is really delicious. 
Yeah, it's a great beer and it's really versatile too. I mean, you look at this and you say, this is a dark beer, it's gonna pair with, you know, steaks or it's gonna pair with this, that and the other. Right. And that's one of the things that, you know, Belgian beer was made to pair with food. I mean, it, it is, oh, it is. Uh, and, and they can be so, so versatile. I, you know, I would start off looking at something here. I mean, yeah, you can definitely do a steak. Yes, you can do a, you know, roasted pork with like a demi glace sauce or something. Mm -hmm. You know what I'd love to have this with right now, Bill? What's that? Just because just I'd like to have it right now. Prosciutto <laughs> wrapped figs. Wow. Prosciutto wrapped flip that figs. That sounds really good. With like a balsamic reduction over the top, just mm. a little drizzle, I think would just be absolutely killer it would. It would. Uh, with this. But, you know, this is one of the great things about this beer. Sometimes with the Old Favorite Friday videos, too, the beers aren't widely available and they're not distributed throughout the entire country. You can find St. Bernardus wherever you live. Yeah. You might have to go to your specialty beer retailer. Right. that might not be at your grocery local grocery store, but you can find this beer. And listen, this is one of those beers where there's multiple things you can do. One, you can age it. Right. Bill loves 100%. aging beer. Bill has tons of beer at his house. We always say the house is sinking. Uh, so he knows what it's like to age this beer and, and, and see how it changes over time. And you can crack open a four pack and, and you know make it with different dishes. Try different things with it because it's so versatile, it's so flavorful. And the sum of all parts, when you put this together with other dishes can really accentuate different flavors and bring out new flavors in the beer itself. Absolutely, absolutely. It's a very rich flavored beer and I think it typically would pair well with rich flavors, but the, the prosciutto and fig, ooh. Sounds well, good to me. I always think about dark fruits, dried fruits. Yeah, when it's I got think the dark about, fruit. Uh, quadruples. But this is the other thing about it is that I think, again, going to like the American versions of this, the accentuation on American quadruples is really fruit forward, mm -hmm. like jammy almost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is not bad. It no. has hints of that, but it has the spice component that you mentioned. Yeah. It's got a little baker's chocolate in it. It's got it a does. lot of things going on that give you complexity and nuance. And that what, that's what makes a great Old Favorite Friday beer. It's a beer that stands up to the test of time because of how interesting and complex the beer is. Bill, you have anything else to say you want to say about St. Bernardus in general or this beer? No, I can just say that this has always been one of my favorite beers since the first time I've had it. I think they continue to do, to, to do a great job with it. And uh, I think it's a beer that if somebody out there doesn't know it, you got to try this one. It's great. In, in just in general, Belgian beers are a, a gateway beer for so many people. And, you know, this is a beer that made people fall in love with craft beer for the first time. And, uh, you know, readily available and absolutely delicious after all these years. There's screaming things in the background. I think people are wrapping <laughs> pallets. So we're going to have that. We're going to check out for Old Favorite Friday. But we will see you next week. Please go on the, on the YouTube channel. Uh, check out all our videos. Like, subscribe, do all those great things. Tell us what you should be drinking next week for Old Favorite Friday. And we'll see you next time. Cheers. Cheers.